Jim. Hello, Jim. How are you? How you on TV the other You did. Yeah, we're ready. To go. We're ready. Okay, folks. It's about 7:08, and we are entered back into regular session. We're in executive session, and um, I want to welcome everybody to the uh, town of Situate Board of Selectmen's meeting. Um, right now, we're on agenda item number four, which is uh, the walk-in period. Are there any walk-ins? If you could identify yourself and your address, Ms. Baker, it's good to see you. Val Baker of 77 Brook Street. 77 Brook Street. Ms. Baker, what can we do for you? Um, I am vice chair for the Jenkins School Council. And at, we had gone to the October 4th school committee meeting when they had done their first public budget presentation for the 11-12 school year. Um, when we saw the, the dire picture um, at our following council meeting, there was a lot of discussion about it. So council members said, um, I think we really need to draft a letter for school committee, um, the selectmen advisory board, just telling them our concerns and what we felt was absolutely necessary to be maintained to have education as we know it now. So the Jenkins Council did draft the letter, but after we did, we thought the other schools, probably the other councils, I'm sure, have the exact same concerns. So rather than us presenting something, then each school doing the same thing, um, I invited all of the school councilors to come for a joint meeting, which we did about a month ago. And there were um, at least 30 in attendance. So we met for three hours, and um, we drew up this letter. And last night I did go to school committee. They were not unfamiliar with this since some of the school committee had actually attended the same meeting. Um, so I presented it to them. It is written to the Situate Selectmen, the School Committee, the Advisory Committee, and the Public Schools Administrative Council. Um, I did see Bob DiLorenzo this morning, so I did give him this letter, which he said when they have their meeting on the 16th that he would give it to them. So if you don't mind, I, I would just like to read this. Um, it, it is signed uh, by many members of school councils. So when I finish, I'll give this to you, Mr. Danahy. Sure. Okay. okay. The Situate Public School Councils are struggling with the fact that we're currently below minimum services in the Situate Public Schools for the 2010-2011 school year. Any cuts beyond this year's level will devastate the core of education for our children. If the current financial forecast is not changed by the economy or the town-controlled finances, education as we know it in Situate will no longer exist. The current picture of schools in 2010-2011 is Teachers and students are struggling to meet Massachusetts curriculum expectations and make adequate yearly progress as mandated by No Child Left Behind due to the reality that Situate High School's accreditation is jeopardized due to lack of course offerings. Some courses at Situate High School have 30 plus students in a class. Some students at Gates may experience two to three directed study halls during a day dependent on trimester. This equates to 90 to 120 minutes per day of no direct instruction in addition to lunch. There can be upwards of 80 plus Gates students in a directed study during a period. Some classes at Gates have 30 plus students in a class. Some grade levels, one through three, are experiencing 25 plus students in a class. Some grade levels, four through six, are experiencing 30 plus students in a class at the elementary level. As a district, we're struggling to meet the promise of the Situate Public Schools mission statement, end quote, to provide the opportunity for a comprehensive education for all students, end quote. If there is no change in the financial picture, the core of education must be protected. According to state and federal mandate, the core of public, edu of public education is reading instruction, communication instruction, including writing and speaking, mathematics instruction, science instruction, high-level thinking and problem-solving. We believe that a priority must be set to protect the above mandates in the following basic services programs, 
in order for our students to meet the needs of our students. We ask the Situate Public Schools Administrative Council and the Situate Public School Committee to preserve practical and functional class sizes for students at all levels, academic support, which would be literacy and mathematics specialists, and optimum direct instruction and time on learning. As school council members, parents, and educators, we acknowledge that a well-rounded educational experience includes other aspects of a school environment. We fear and recognize the fact that areas such as foreign languages, athletics, art, music, physical education, technology, and social emotional services may be sacrificed as a result of the anticipated budgetary reductions in 2011-2012. And we have signed it educationally yours. And then uh, Thank you. I know that none of this is news to you. No, it, I, I appreciate the letter. I just want to, one comment, we can't discuss it because it's a uh, walk-in and, and we can't. Uh, no, I, that's but I just want to say that uh, the board is acutely aware of the situation as well as the school committee, town administrator and the superintendent. Um, the issues you've raised, obviously, we've been trying to address since the summer jointly. And in conjunction with that, um, <clears throat> I'd also comment and say that um, there are many priorities that the town's trying to address, schools as well as the town services, in light of the fiscal and the financial situation that not only the town of Situate, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and obviously the rest of the nation's facing. Um, and we're trying to hopefully resolve those in our upcoming budget process starting our next meeting. But um, I thank you. Thank you very Just much. Just wanted to give it to you before you stop. Thank you. Thank you very okay. much, Ms. Baker. I thank Actually, you if very you could much. give that to um, Ken Donovan, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you again. Thank you. Uh, happy holidays. Other walk-ins? Anybody else? All right. Seeing none, I'd like to move on to the next agenda item, which is a uh, agenda item number five, discussion vote. Change of manager at the Inn at Situate at 7 Beaver Dam Road. On behalf of the applicant, I see um, Ms. Ferguson, would you please come, come on up here? Um, I am going to recuse myself at this point, and I'd ask that my uh, um, vice chair, uh, Mr. Norton, take over at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Linda, how are you? Good. How are you? Uh, just your name and address again. Once again, for the record. Sure. Linda Ferguson, 57 Kingsway. And you would like to take over as manager of the end. Yes. Basically. That's a nice way to put it. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, the uh, former manager has chosen a different path, and that leaves me. <laughs> so. Questions from the board? So you're currently the general manager, right? Yeah, and so I'd be, you know, as the manager sure. of the pub and the inn as well. Uh, motion? Motion, please. For the floor, anybody? Motion. Move the board of selectmen vote to grant a change of manager for the inn at Citroen Harbor, 7 Beaver Dam Road, to Linda Ferguson. Second. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to the uh, next agenda item. Um, oh, we're beyond, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, for 710, a discussion vote, li a liquor license hearing, transfer of the license, the River Club, 78 Border Street. However, we're starting that at, uh, instead of uh, 710, at 714. So if the um, applicants are here, if they'd come forward, please, and address the board. Is this, um, If you could identify yourselves, tell us your name and address. It would be greatly appreciated for us. If I could start with you, ma'am. Yes, this is Kiki Lazarus. Kiki Lazarus, 77, yes, Water Street. Street. And George Lazarus. George Lazarus, 77. 77. Okay. And you're looking to transfer the liquor license from, I know you have the next two agenda items, but transfer it from um, the MWB. current MWB LLC doing uh, business as the River Club to Nana. Enterprises LLC doing business as the River Club, 78 Border Street, Situate, Mass. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, can I just generally, why are you transferring it and what, what's the explanation that you're doing? Obviously, you're transferring it to yourselves from whom? And from the people that had leased it before. Okay. You're the owners? They're leasing it. Back to them. They're the, you're you're the, the owners. The original owners. owners. 
since 1972. Okay, and so you're looking to get the liquor li yeah, license. I had it years ago and my name, okay. and now I just want it back. Okay, fair enough. And I know that you've set up two different entities between the owners and then the entity yes. that's leasing it. Yes. Fair enough. We have the land and the business. Separate, okay. <laughs> Questions from the board? Just a comment, uh, <coughs> familiar with uh, the Lazarus Church, they've had this license for a long time. They've run a, a great establishment down there when they had it, so I enthusiastically look forward to Just, I didn't was. see a doc, is there a document in here? Did they, where are they writing something to give it back to you? Is that, did you see that? I assume they want it. Yeah, yeah, they definitely have given it. <coughs> There should be a document or a paper. So that was a business, is their lease expired? Or did they well, sell or? The lease didn't expire, they left. They left? They left. Okay, so John, you may know better. Does it, is there some sort of written, because technically they have the license now. I'm, I'm assuming they abandoned and, and you say yeah, they left. Also the MLB was supposed to be here, but he's not here. But he also signed, I believe that, um, somewhere in your papers there. Who is he? Just so I have the. Oh yeah, I did see that. You're right. And the signatures are at the bottom of the page. Yep. So this document, right? No. Certificate of authorization? Transfer, it's right here. That's it right there. Yeah. And that's Fred's signature. Not that I can read his signature, but <laughs> <laughs> that's his scribble. <coughs> Thank you. Other questions? Any Motion. Questions? Motion, please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant the transfer of the common victual of, all kind of alcoholic beverage license held by MWB LLC doing business as the River Club to Nana Enterprises LLC D DBA the River Club 78 Border Street situate Mass. The premises consisting of one floor, five entrance uh, exits in exits main reception area, buffet lounge, bar lounge, outdoor port porch, bridal suite, kitchen restaurants and basement from for boiler and storage. Second. Motion One. seconded by Mr. Harris. Discussion? Yeah. W what are you going to do with it now? Are you just going to run it as, yes. as the River it Club? Right now, right now, we're just going to run it. Run it as it is. As it is at the moment. Okay. Fair enough. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Don't you. go anywhere Happy yet. Holidays. Don't go Thank anywhere. You. No, 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 no. You're next. Oh. Agenda oh. item number seven, which is a discussion vote transfer of entertainment. And communular, uh, common vicular's license for the River Club 78. So, in conjunction with the uh, liquor license, in order to function as a going concern, you need to have the vicular's license as well as the entertainment license. So, in order to have events there, you need both these. Um, again, discussion from the board. Any questions, rather, before discussion? I assume that same document is, holds true for this. I don't know if they're necessarily no, they actually have to applying transfer. for it. They're actually it's applying. Not a is it a transfer or an no. application? It's, it's an application, but it, it, we put it as a transfer. Yeah. But, um, if they transfer the liquor Because we're doing all those tonight anyway. So they yes. expired right. the 31st. So basically, you're right. It's really you're applying for it, in essence, to take it over. All right. And you can have the same, yeah. same, the same. band, no I mean, no weddings changes. and all this. Yeah. Other questions, discussion, a motion? Move the Board of Selectmen vote to tra uh, transfer, I guess, the Common Vicular's License Entertainment License from <coughs> MWB LLC to Nana Enterprises LLC, 78 Border Street, Situate, to be executed upon successful completion of the liquor license transfer. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Norton. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Folks, thank you very much. Happy holidays. Thank you. Happy holidays.
Moving on to agenda item number eight, a discussion vote, solar array. Mr. Banger, Thank you. would you be so kind I'm to come up? With, I'm here with your um, Renewable Energy Committee. Who are going to join us? Who's this? Mr. Reedy. It's always good to see you. Anybody else? Come on up. Come on up. Let's get it. Let's get everybody sitting because, around. Uh, this is this is uh, the solar topic, but these are the people oh, that brought you the wind turbine, which is going to produce 50% of the power renewably in situ. Oh, really? Construction to begin this winter. If I could, <coughs> I'd, I'd like to introduce, I know Mr. Toppin's here. Unfortunately, I see another agenda item later on, but Mr. Toppin, and who else is on your committee? Uh, Mr. Mr. Don Salmon's here. <coughs> and uh, Kathy Loftus. Thank you. Um, Bill Limbacher, is Bill here? Mr. Limbacher, yes, he is. Oh, yeah, we said that Bill would uh, sit in the back, but he'd stay quiet, but he said, I've never sat in the back and stayed quiet. Right, Bill? Bruce Meacham. We'll put him in the front end. The committee, and of go. course, you know Chairman Reedy. Yes, uh, so absolutely. That's, that's Thank the, you. That's the committee. You're welcome. Um, this, the committee, I've worked with the committee as kind of their technical resource, uh, done the, uh, some of, take notes and do things like the typing. Um, and uh, as <laughs> the summation of what the committee is, is that we're recommending that the town enter into a contract with uh, contract negotiations for a property lease and a power purchase agreement to supply electrical power to the town from a solar array constructed on top of our driftway landfill. Uh, last spring, you authorized the Renewable Energy Committee and the DPW to go out and solicit proposals to find out what does it look like if we were to do this, what's the feasibility, and what's the savings opportunity, uh, to find an energy developer who would finance, design, construct, maintain, own, take responsibility for operating a utility-grade solar array on top of our landfill on the driftway, about 15 acres of land. Uh, in September, after the RFP was issued, uh, nine firms responded to that. Uh, the Renewable Energy Committee has worked uh, probably every Monday or Tuesday night through October and into November uh, interviewing the firms. Uh, they evaluated all the proposals first on the qualitative factors, such as their experience with landfills, uh, their experience with solar, uh, their financing capability, and what their ownership structure looked like. Were they a nice tight-knit firm or were they a bunch of ten partners all working together? Uh, and then, then, then after that, then looked at the economics of each one of their um, energy price commitments. Seven firms uh, were uh, interviewed following the evaluations. Uh, two firms were not interviewed because they didn't meet certain criterion. Uh, four firms were then invited to provide additional information uh, detailed about their company, about their proposals, their financing capabilities, that sort of thing. And then based upon uh, further evaluation of all that data, the committee unanimously, unanimously voted to select a firm called Brightfields Development of Wellesley as the most capable energy partner. Um, so uh, the, uh, from the town standpoint and from the committee standpoint, you can discuss it further. The, um, we recommend that the town enter into negotiations with Brightfield for a lease and a power supply agreement. And the recommendation is based upon the fact of the economic benefit, overall economic benefit to the town being uh, $260,000 a year savings for 20 years. That's about a $5.2 million savings to us over this 20 year period. Um, it's not only the economics, the economics are important, but also what's important is uh, can they pull it off? Because this is a $10 million investment that they will make. They will have $10 million of equipment on top of our landfill. They'll own it, they'll have to maintain it. The contract locks them into providing electricity. If they don't provide a certain amount of electricity, they have to pay us for our loss of that electricity. Um, and then they have to be able to keep it running for 20 years because of course they're, they're not likely to make any money if, if we don't make any money. The firm that was selected, Brightfields, uh, has as their background uh, brownfields. They, they've, t they've taken over landfills in California, North Carolina, uh, and Massachusetts. Uh, these would be closed landfills that were essentially Love Canal type sites. So they're very familiar dealing with state, federal, and local regulations on managing landfills. And that's pretty exciting. So they've got a long history at that. They've also done some solar on top of the landfills. They're, for instance, they're doing solar on top of the landfill in Woburn. Uh, that, interestingly enough, that Woburn site is the one that's the uh, feature of the movie called? Civil Action. Civil Action. Yes, right. Uh, so they're, they're responsible. They've been given that responsibility to manage that site. And then lastly, uh, 
Their immediate partner on the solar side is called Solar Designs. Uh, solar Design has been in the industry for back in the Jimmy Carter administration. They, were, they had the project to put uh, solar on top of the White House. Uh, they're going back now to put, uh, they, it turns out the Reagan administration took the solar off it, but now the, the Obama administration has asked the solar to be put back on. That's just a small piece of it, but they've done uh, 14 sites equivalent to ours for NSTAR. They've done two sites equivalent to ours for National Grid. They've done the Boston Convention Center uh, with a site uh, with more power than what we're producing. They've done American embassies all over the world. Um, They've done work for Public Service of New Hampshire, Harvard University, um, uh, Public, uh, what's? PBS. Uh, PBS, uh, they did the PBS project. So they've done, so we're very convinced that their capability to pull this off is uh, preeminent. So anyway, that's where we're leaving it. We'd suggest that uh, if you recommend, if you agree to proceed uh, as we recommend, then we would engage council experience in negotiating energy contracts, the ones we use with wind turbine, and begin working on a contract. We think that within two months we'd be back with everything all sealed up. When would they, assuming that everything worked to clockwork, when <coughs> would they begin to construct and start putting up panels? Um, if, if we were able to reach, uh, if let's say in January we could reach contract agreement with them, uh, which you would sign ultimately the contracts, um, then they can, unlike wind turbine where there's a long lead time for the materials, uh, the materials are available and so they would begin construction in the spring and could be looking at the sky in the fall and generating power. So I'd say a one year construction timeline. Questions from the board? Sean? Just a, oh, no, go ahead, Joe. Just a comment, Mr. Chairman. I think uh, over the past year or so we've had conversations with Mr. Reedy and, and uh, so I can attest to the number of times that they've met uh, dealing with this. And I can also, based on uh, Paul's uh, thoughts and enthusiasm uh, that he generated about the whole committee. I mean, not a conversation went, went by without him mentioning how thrilled he was to be serving on a committee with the likes of the people that he had on there. Uh, some of them I didn't know, but after talking to Paul, I get to know their reputation that they uh, must have in the field because he was so so complimentary and so high on them. So thank you all for serving. Uh, it looks like uh, you're everything that Paul told me <laughs> over the past year. So thank you all. Just with that being said, Joe, if I could take a minute, obviously people in town know Peter. Uh, you know, he's an engineer by background. So when, when these companies came in, he's been fantastic because he's familiar with the processes of, uh, you know, bringing in contractors and doing projects uh, of large magnitude like a lot of these. Uh, so his insights were great. Um, we have Junaid Yasin, who's not here tonight. Uh, but Junaid's an engineer by trade as well. Uh, he had been terrific because he had worked in this field. Uh, it's pretty much all he does. So sometimes these companies would come in and any question that we didn't know to ask, Junaid would just, you know, pinpoint and just save us, you know, a half an hour of just a normal discussion because it'd say, look, let's just cut to the chase, you know, three issues, one, two, three, and immediately everybody was, you know, right on track. Um, uh, Kathy Loftus uh, works, works for Whole Foods and does their green energy. So it's also interesting since some of these companies that would come in, there was recognition with it's a, you know, they seen each other at trade shows and it gave you that comfort of there were people that knew each other and shouldn't have the helpful insights in terms of what she's experienced with Whole Foods, et cetera. Also an engineer. And also <laughs> an engineer. Um, Don, uh, similar, I mean, when we started doing the uh, uh, electrical comparisons across the town with all the different meters, he spent an inordinate amount of time trying to figure out where the meters were and uh, work of that nature, as well as a lot of the packages that we got from the RFPs, they always uh, good enough uh, through the town administrator to send out. Uh, you know, we were getting back binders that were massive. So we just try to say to each other, look, let's try and do, you know, a, a binder a week, get through it, and then figure out where we're going to go, prioritize, categorize, and then get in front of these people and have our questions ready for them. Um, Bruce had, had been involved with his own project uh, in Norwell and is very familiar with uh, things of the, this nature. Uh, he just came on recently in the past year. Um, Bill Limbacher, 
fantastic. Obviously, everybody knows Bill. Um, but e even tonight, we were just laughing. We, we were always trying to stay ahead of the curve and be, you know, stay in the, in the lead with the turbine. Uh, and there were little intricacies with uh, zoning, et cetera, where Bill obviously was right on it and knew exactly what to do. Uh, and for a while, we were neck and neck with Plymouth. We got out ahead of them. And most recently, we're finding out that apparently they just recently contacted Al to say, can we look at your zoning bylaw? Uh, obviously, go back to Bill, because Bill was the one that did a lot of the legwork with that. Um, Anybody will Mark Calvin. He's not uh, on the committee. He's not on the committee, but uh, he's a lawyer with Wilmer and Hale, and he's a local resident. And when we first met him at some of the different meetings, he agreed to come back and just sit in on the meetings, and just to have you know kind of <coughs> pro bono legal advice. Uh, and everybody that came in knew him because of what he does, and he writes a lot of the new rules and regs for the federal government. Um, so. The, the great part about it was, as I was, Joe was alluding to when we had these discussions, was it was great as the committee came together. And also, I'm a little bit uh, all over the place because. Really? <laughs> <laughs> but it was great with Al because Al kind of <coughs> came, came on, just kind of would bring all the thoughts together and, and, and keep everything you know, focused and moving along where I get sometimes get sidetracked and, and uh, we were able to keep a good pace going. Um, so it was great. And I just I think tonight, just to thank everybody that came, it was it's obviously wouldn't be here without everybody's help and the full interaction. And just so the people in town know, I mean, if you look at the two projects and you look at the amount of money, uh, granted, as Peter alludes to when we started, I think the wind turbine was it eight years? Six years. Six years. Six years we've been at that, and then a few years with this. But the net net of it all, if you cumulatize the two projects together, it's it's, it's a half million dollars a year. A half a million dollars a year for 20 and no years. investment. And, and no investment. No investment. Yeah. Janine um, pushed that from day one. When we first got together, we said, let them tell you what you need to build and let them pay for it. Right. And we've taken that approach, approach consistently. I was right on with that when he came in and joined in with that whole theory. And when people in town say it's taken so long, and you look them in the eye and you say, and it didn't cost us a dime. Well, we're doing something right if we're doing that, and you guys and actually did. If I may, I will be so bold as to say you need to take that on the same approach with your committee that's reviewing the old Pier 44 location. The charge you have given them includes financial responsibility, and that shouldn't be the case. Let the developers do that. So just all in all, it's, it's kind of cool to be here. It's great that Alvin thought to maybe get us all together to get in here. Um, I didn't think it had been that long, but it has been that long. And as I just told these guys, I was a little late to our meeting tonight because I have a daughter going to the high school next year, and I still can't believe that. So <laughs> here we are, two projects down, and hopefully we'll keep plodding along. And again, we're going to be sad to see Peter go. Uh, his, his resignation is on the agenda tonight. But uh, you know, after the amount of time he spent, I think he's saying, you know, it would be nice to take a little break. Um, but uh, we'll keep plugging along. And I know you guys uh, just voted at the last town meeting. Uh, the the, uh, the ESCO projects that we're going to start taking on, and uh, we'll just try and keep moving along from here. Thank you. Questions from the board? Yeah. Tony. The the project itself, is it is the, the savings that you plan, it says up to 15 acres. Is it is it actually going to take up the full 15 It'll, acres? Well, the, the whole thing is around 20 acres. It, it will take up uh, the majority of the usable land up there. There will, included in the project is, as you come up to the top, there will be a... Uh, uh, 20 by 20 um, shelter, uh, picnic-like shelter that will include um, a uh, interactive electronic display that will show constantly what's being produced and will have discuss solar energy. And then additionally, they're going to put uh, those same displays, I think one in town hall and one in, the, in one of the schools or some such like that. And then offer also a, a series of, uh, well, there's a lot of uh, training advice for like the, uh, the fifth grade's teacher to teach this stuff, and then the science teacher can teach this stuff, you know, aids and that sort of thing. And but so, so the other part of that was they said they'd make it web-based so that any of the science teachers at any of the classrooms at any of the schools, if it does fit in with their, um, their, their plans right. and, and, and their, what they're teaching, they can just as easily log onto a site and essentially show the layout of the, the project on the landfill. Um, 
and, and show exactly on whichever day, whether the sun's really out and doing a you know, great job or whether it's cloudy, how much it's generating, you'd be able to monitor it on a day-to-day. -day. So, so is there going to be like public access then? In other words, like a trail that you can go up and when you say there's a, uh, uh, some people can go up and look at the solar array, but also I know I've seen people, I saw a gentleman running actually up there and, and, and saw obviously the views, but I'm like, yep. is that uh, part the of the gravel component? path up there? Yeah. Right. Uh, that's not going to be developed any further, uh, but the and the entire project will be fenced in because of. I mean, it's a power plant. <coughs> right. Okay. Um, but but the on the perimeter, public access will be for this uh, kiosk, which is an informational kiosk, and also will take advantage of the view that's up there. Okay. Good. Sorry. Um, well, essentially, what they did say though is it's a power plant, so they're not going to have people go beyond the boundary line. Makes sense. Because right. you're talking about two megs. And and as we all know, this is a sensitive piece of property. Just to reiterate we met with Ty and Bond a month ago yep. and um, went over other uses of that property and, and just so people are aware of the fact you know they were pretty straightforward in saying that there's not a, there's no capability of putting fields on that piece of property unless you want to put in hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to build a, um, a buffer over this possible sinkholes and stuff for I think he said 15 to 20 years. Yeah. So um, I think in our evaluation of this, we, we realized that that is not a use. So all of you people were hoping for a soccer field, lacrosse field, baseball field, or whatever field up there. It's really not in the cards right now. And the lease for this property, is, is it a 20-year lease? Is that what, yeah. what most people are looking for? Yeah. So after 20 years, if a new form of power came in place and arrays were obsolete, then at that point in time, that, that will probably have settled to the point of some alternative use. Exactly. And the revenue stream, through the choices that the town makes in budgeting, uh, can be used for reinvestment in things such as redeveloping other areas we have, like the Driftway Park for fields or, or other right. town properties. So I think and that's a great idea that Al had. Um, the, the, the savings itself of the 260 per year, um, is that a simple calculation in terms of you know, power is three dollars a unit, and we're going to get it for a dollar a unit, and we expect to produce. Yeah. As we all know, you can make a spreadsheet say whatever you want it to say. Well, um, I assume you guys have beaten up those numbers, but is it is it that simplistic? It is. It's very simplistic. It doesn't take into t the time value of money because we're not don't have a value. We don't have an investment here, so it's not like we're putting money right. down. We got to amortize that. It simply takes uh, today's power cost and says that if power went up. Uh, three percent per year, okay, and then compares it to the price offered for the specific years here. Uh, that we end up saying that they're offering us a price of uh, uh, call it ten cents over twenty years, and the power company is offering us a price of twenty cents over those years. Today's electricity costs us fourteen cents, so it's a very conservative look at. You know, if if we if if electricity didn't go up at all, we'd still be making uh, savings in the order of uh, between eight and four cents per kilowatt hour through the whole 20-year period. Okay. And just base so that on how much we're using right now. Yeah. And we have the capacity. I guess you sell it back to the. If you don't use it yourself, you just sell it back to <clears> the. What happens is the there's a meter at the field, the same way the wind turbine. There's a meter at at that measures the electricity produced, okay? Some days it's not, some days it is, okay? Two people read that meter. The Bright Fields reads the meter and sends us a bill. National Grid meets the re reads the meter and sends us a check, okay? Their check is bigger than ours by this 200,000, 250 a year on average. You know, it, it grows from like 180 in the first year to 370 in the 20th year based on the assumptions, but that's that's how then we get so it's, it's just a it's just a cash into the um, uh, what do you call it the general ledger right. cash in right. and then we'll figure out where that can be applied where the funds can go um, the, the last question I had was you saw you saw a lot of people nine people is a lot a lot of time to look at it are there are there a couple things that stood out for this company I mean it was unanimous so you, you listen to all these people and and this these rose to the top what were the one or two things that made this company the one that you wanted to go with? First and foremost was uh, their um, past dealings with landfills. Um, second issue was that they, they, everybody had a relationship, or most, most of the companies had a relationship with Time Bond. Um, they, they alleviated a lot of my concerns 
just so everybody knows, is we're doing a cantilevered system, so it's not even going to, uh, it's going to rest on top. It's, uh, it's not, it's, there's going to be no penetration. Oh, it's like a base it's just, it's cement just slabs. Ballasted. Just yeah. ballasted. Um, and, and through all these different discussions, and obviously, actually, with everybody being, you know, everybody that's an engineer having these discussions, we were very, very concerned about uh, down the road, as you brought up time on talking about doing a field. I mean, essentially, these guys laughed at us and said, the worst thing in the world you could possibly do up there because of ethane and all these other issues, and then getting into runoff and all these other concerns. Our concern with them was more or less, we had said to them, look, we even built into the price that you guys would take over that liability. They said, yes, no one else would touch it. That was a huge issue. And I had said to the group from the selectmen's camp, uh, camp, when you're looking at it, your real issue is, yeah, it's great to have a revenue stream coming in, but I don't want any liability on the road. Uh, and they really alleviated those concerns. Uh, another part of the calculation we're talking about the numbers is a, a tax credit that's going away at the end of December this year, 30% federal tax credit for these types of projects if they go into the ground. A lot of these companies come out and say, well, your pricing's contingent on us being going now. Mm -hmm. These guys come out and say, we don't even care. We have investors that don't care. It's not even in our numbers. Took the heat off of us. We figured we could take more time to plan. Um, and then solar, uh, the solar guy. Which yeah, and the, sol solar, the solar person that works with these guys, when he came in and started talking about how he, he's been doing it since the 70s, a lot of these companies came in and their people were doing it since 2004, 5, 6, 7, when it became like the new thing to do. Mm -hmm. And when he brought up the, the White House, the Carter administration, uh, PBS, Harvard University, I mean, this guy just rattled these things off one after another. And essentially, he'd look at some of the projects and say, well, the reason why you need X amount of that space up there is <coughs> the angles, the this, the that, with the sun going whatever way. And he, he knew far more than anybody that sat in front of us. And it was one of those two we walked away and we thought he was a little bit eccentric, but at the same point, you knew the guy knew his stuff inside and out. Mm -hmm. um, and then just also with the numbers, what, what these guys were nice about, which some of the other people, you know, we, we just it was great because we, we actually had some of these people go back twice, which they probably weren't happy about. But well, we kept digging and digging and digging. Um, and what we found was a lot of the people didn't want to guarantee a, a base rate in case something went wrong. We wanted to make sure the town was still covered. We had our own insurance on it. Uh, a lot of them came up with the idea, we don't, we don't want to guarantee year to year. Well, we, we kind of to cumulatively came together and said, well, would there be something we could work on on like a three-year rolling average? Kind of like I was thinking in our industry where you know mutual fund portfolio managers get paid on a three-year average versus having a great year and then a terrible year and then their bonus gets screwed up. They came out and a few of these guys, especially this group, said, hey, we love that three-year rolling idea because it gives us much more latitude and we don't have to worry about a great sunny year versus a very bad year. And on a three-year, we know it levels the, the curve. Um, so, I mean, there were, there were, I can't even imagine, like, uh, it seems simplistic, the map that we're looking at when you're looking at these spreadsheets, but when you go back into the formulas that we were using, uh, there's SREC credits, there's all these, I mean, this, 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 it's a multifaceted, multivariable yeah. approach that all these things came into. And what we try to do is just break it down to the most simplistic elements and know that one, our downside's guaranteed, two, our uh, liability's covered, and three, the folks that we're dealing with are legit and they're not new to the game. That's great. That's all I have. Good. Any other questions? Sean, Joe? None. I'll just answer them all. The biggest thing that jumped out with me was that this company was going to take responsibility. That's what stuck into my mind. And I just wanted Paul to mention it, and he already did. Some people, and I know they're not going to penetrate the membrane that we use to cover the landfill, and you said it floats. I just wanted to hear you say, NL. Yeah. And they, they really knew the whole issue about loading on a fair square footage basis, et cetera. And, you know, all in all, it was a great thing. It seemed like you're taking kind of a college course because I was just kind of hanging with everybody, listening to the questions and saying, wow, I never, you know, thought of a lot of that. But it also was kind of why it was kind of neat because the group is, you know, very proactive and it was a dynamic thing that just kind of facilitated itself. And then the tough part was at the very end figuring out, you know, top four, who do you go with? And here are the reasons why we had to spread our sheets around and did our grades and came out with what we came out with. So hopefully uh, it moves forward from here. Motion? Motion, Mr. Chairman? Please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract for a, a large scale solar array at the Driftway Landfill to Brightfields Development LLC of Wellesley, Massachusetts, contingent upon successful completion of contract negotiations. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Discussion? Saying none. Any questions from the audience? Saying none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Folks, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all. very job. much. Thank you. Great job. job. And you know what, Mr. Limbacher, you didn't say anything, even though you're on the back bench there. <laughs> <laughs> they swore me to be good. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. I can. Moving on to agenda item number nine, a vote open the annual town meeting warrant for April 11th, 2011.
Any motion? Move the board so can vote to open the annual town meeting warrant <coughs> at 7.46 p.m. Second. Seconded by Mr. Vignani. Discussion? Saying none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay, moving on to uh, agenda item number 10. Discussion, vote the annual license renewals. We have a number. Want me to read them? As the clerk? Yes. <laughs> uh, do we need to say anything? You have to suggest move the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the following liquor license for the year 2011. The Barker Tavern. Situ I just run right through them, Kim? Run right through them. Yep. Uh, Satua Tavern, Cosmos Cafe, uh, Harborside Wine and Spirits, the River Club, Hadley Golf Club, In at Situate Harbor, the Village Market, PJ's Country House, Finn's, Reynolds Package Store, Satuate Post 3169 VFW, uh, Situate uh, Harbor Yacht Club, Hamar Corp. Uh, what is that? I have a question about that. Let's go through them. In the, or, okay, go ahead. Um, Sands End Cafe, appropriately next. Situate, uh, Situate Package Store, JBNJ Foods Inc., DBA Tedeschi's Food Shop, <coughs> Situate Racket and Fitness, Oro Restaurant, and Widow, Widow's Walk Golf Course. Is second. there a second? Seconded by Mr. Harris. <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 I'd like to abstain from the Inn Situate on that one vote. So. Okay. Next Move. motion. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the following common vicular's license for 2011. Barker Tavern, Situate Tavern, Cosmos Cafe, The River Club, Hadley Golf Course, Inn at Situate Harbor, The Village Market, PJ's Country House, Finn's, Reynolds Package Store, Situate Post 3169 VFW, Situate Harbor Yacht Club, Sands End Cafe, JBNJ Foods, Inc., DBA, Tedeschi's Food Shop, Situate Racket and Fitness, Oro Restaurant, Widow's Walk Golf Course, Cersei's Grotto, Dad's Place, Dribbles, Dunkin' Donuts Driftway, Dunkin' Don Donuts Harbor, Egypt Country Store, Harbor House of Pizza, Hennessy News, Maria's Subs and Pizza, Mary Lou's News, Morning Glory's Bakery, Silent Chef, Patriot Cinemas Inc., and Wilbur's North. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. I abstain from, again, the in its situate camp. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the following entertainment licenses for 2011. The Barker Tavern, the River Club, Hatherley Golf Club, Inn at Situate Harbor, PJ's Country House, Finns, Situate Post 3169 VFW, Situate Harbor Yacht Club, and Sands End Cafe. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, again, uh, abstain from Inn at Situate, Kim. I'm going to abstain for the next one. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the Inn at Situate's in it, the Inn Holders license for the Inn at Situate Harbor for 2011. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. All right. Move the Board of Selectmen, Selectmen vote to renew the following Class II licenses for 2011. Alfred Coyle, DBA Seacrest Auto, Automotive Depot, Inc., Driftway Auto, James P. Donovan, and McBrien's Diagnostic Repair. Second. Seconded by Mr. Norton. Discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the following Class Three licenses for 2011. Ryan Allen's LLC uh, Ray's Repair Shop. Second. Seconded by Mr. Norton. Discussion? Saying none. All in favor? Aye. I'll abstain, Joe. Abstained by Mr. Harris. 3-0. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the following Hawker's Pedalos license for 2011. Paul Crowley, Joseph Hughes, Nana's homemade beach, uh, Nana's homemade beach buns, Serenetta seaside chocolatier, Holly Hess, mouse cakes, PJ hot dog express, Sandra Higgins, Ralph Young, Philip Edwards, Barbara Keefe, and Peter Turod. Second. Seconded by Just Mr. Harris. Discussion, if I may. Discussion. Just one comment, Mr. Chairman. The awarding of a Hawkins Pedals license by this board allows these people or anyone else that has a Hawker Pedals license to to sell their wares in the town of Situate. Yes. They cannot be asked for money from any other organization to sell their wares. Correct. 
Thank you. So, in other words, you get a hawker peddler's license and you want to go out for an event to sell certain items, you, you, this license in and of itself grants you the ability to sell it and you don't need to be um, contributing or paying towards any event. You have every right to go to that event and sell. So you are Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sean. Well, you mentioned that, Joe. Don't they, on their licenses, Kim, have specific start and end dates? And Some locations. They do on their applications. The right. Right, so not all of them. If you were thinking about Heritage Days, no, oh, no maybe that's not a good example. Uh, um, St. Patrick's Day Parade. Uh, no, all right. And if some of these vendors are only set up for Memorial Day to Labor Day, let's say, then they don't have the right to do that. But if they do go there, they have they don't have the right to do it. But if they end up there, they can't be charged by the by the uh, event. The okay. event. Okay. All right. Two hundred dollars or a hundred dollars. Okay. Like that, that's all what right. I'm saying. Right. But now, Kim, do we go through every one of these and say that these people go to the um, farm mar village market, or the I'm sorry, the farmers market? Each each one of these vendors, it, it would specify where they sell. So it, it'll say that on the license. It we don't have to go through that. that. Right. Yes. We don't have to go through that now. No, it does say on the license. So it's specific. These are renewals. So you it's as it as, as it was. Okay. Okay. Folks, you should know. Folks can also get a state peddler's right. license, hawkers peddlers, and if they have a state one, they don't need a local one, and they can go to any event as long as they have that license. I think that was more to my point. I think there were situations in the past where people had state hawkers peddlers licenses, yes. came down to events here, and were charged by the event organizers, and I that's incorrect. They shouldn't be, they shouldn't be charged. They shouldn't have had to pay. That's, and I want to make oh. that clear. So 50 vendors could come down to Heritage Days and set up, set up camp wherever they vendors. want. 100 vendors could. Yes. Would they, okay, but no. they'd have to come and get a permit from no. Tom Hall? No, no, they don't. No. The state uh, they take care of preempts the, the local. 100 market. vendors could come down and say Patrick's Day and sell at the parade. Correct. However, I think if they're selling on a regular weekly basis, it, you can have a local ordinance. You can have a local, that's yes. actually one of Kim and I, our goals for FY12, yeah. um, because technically any hawker or peddler, <coughs> that includes the PTO selling yeah. pins at an event, needs a hawker's peddler. You can waive the fee, but that's just like if you have if you have a state one, you don't have our local. We can still have local bylaws around where and what public ways or whatever, but um, you know, mm -hmm. other than the ones you grant here. Is there a chance we can get that on the annual town meeting? That ordinance? Is that a bylaw? What? What you were just talking about? Oh, no, we can do it procedurally. I mean, oh. all those things are contained within the, the statute and, and your authority to grant hawkers and peddlers now. We just, like many things, need to clarify history in terms of how they've been handled. Well, I mean, the, the scenario that Joe just brought up, 100 people come to Heritage Days, and all of a sudden they start dropping their stuff on Front Street. How do, how do you stop that from happening? Right now you can't in, in that. They have state licenses. Uh, so right. they can say, I was here first? No, they Typically just say that our, my license. you get a hawker or a peddler at a parade mm -hmm. or some sort of that event where they know they'll be, and they're going to sell balloons or, or something of that like. That You'll be those, able to are the, those are the typical hawker or yeah. peddlers. You might be able to designate where they're going to be selling. You right. Know, the but chief can, can do that. Them, the right. chief can do that. My point was you can't charge them. The event can't charge them. That would be correct. They have that's a license my only to point. hawk. Yeah, they, they can pedal a hawk. Yes, they've already gone through that. Love it. One clarification. Name and address? And Vermont. charging a food vendor who most likely has a state license. Am I to understand that we can't charge them to have a space at Heritage Days? If, if they're a hawker peddler, they, maybe if they have a booth, it's a different story, but if they're... Yeah, they're if they have you're a car. charging a rental fee, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. that's different. That's okay. Right. But if someone came down to Heritage what Days... What Joe's referring to is, I guess, what you would call oh. a privilege free fee, yeah. as opposed to... If someone wanted to come down to Heritage Days and sell balloons and had a state hawker's peddler's license, 
you might have a problem stopping them. Yep. Outside the venue yep. of yep. the festival. If they wanted to be down on Front Street or down at the pier or someplace, yeah, you might have a hard time. Uh, the areas I see it is like St. Patrick's Day Parade, where people come down and start selling items along the trade route. Um, the um, uh, Labor Day Parade in Sand Hills, where they come and sell items on the parade route. And then you have another issue, which is like the sandwich truck that could come down and, and sell at the, I don't know, you'll see them occasionally with MBTA, work zone. Mm -hmm. the work zone, they can come and sell. They, they preempt the local jurisdiction because they have a state um, license, if you will, to be able to sell their wares. And that's that's really what the issue is. But I think there are timing issues and there are rental issues, and then there's also location issues where they can't just do it without, you know, when you have an event, they can't say, I'm going to be in the middle of the, 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 the event because I have a state license. No, they're, they're, you can, you know, shall we say, um, legislate where they're going to be, but you can't say, no, you can't come at all. That's the and problem. Unfortunately, we haven't <clears throat> had an issue, but to Ann's point, they have all these vendors that come and rent and do that, and sometimes then, and you know, this happened in another community where it, was where, where it was a huge Fourth of July parade, and all these state hawkers and vendors show up, and they're taking away for what is a fundraising opportunity sometimes for the Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts and things, and it can some be sometimes be an issue with things like popcorn or things like that, but it's just something to be aware of. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. So we had a discussion. Now we need a vote on this. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. Move Moving the board selectman vote to renew the following uh, accepted disposal licenses for 2011. All Town, K.R. Anderson Pumping Company, Joseph Bonomi, Rosano Davis, P.F. Spencer, and Spirito Environmental. Second. Seconded by Mr. Norton. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Will the voters select and vote to renew the bowling license for Situate Bowl Away for 2011? Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Move to the board of selectmen vote to renew the electronic games license for Situate Bowl Away for 2011. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris, who likes electronic games. All in uh, discussion? <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. And lastly, move the board of selectmen vote to renew the movie theater license for Patriot Cinemas, Inc. for 2011. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you very much. So, Kim, do you have all that before we move on? Okay. Moving on to agenda item number 11, which is the acceptance resignation of the Renewable Energy Committee from Mr. Peter C. Topham. And as I alluded to earlier, Mr. Topham is resigning from the Renewable Energy Committee. We want to thank Mr. Topham. Uh, for his service, and I'd accept a motion. Move the board second vote to accept the resignation of Peter Toppin from the Renewable Energy Committee, and further that the board thank Mr. Toppin for his years of service to the committee in the town of Situate. Second. Seconded by Mr. Norton. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And again, thank you. Uh, moving on to agenda item number 12, other business. Mr. Harris? I might do defer to Tricia on this. The Pier 44 committee met the other night and uh, Tricia kind of uh, led us on a little field trip down at the restaurant itself and then back up here well, after I let Tricia take it from there. Um, just what Sean said, we met at 6, I think, yes. and um, had a complete tour of the building, which most people are unaware of how large it is. And um, then came back here to go over the charge, elected chairman, establish a schedule, and um, get some just uh, operational things going. It's a very um, talented group, a very motivated group, and um, they'll be meeting every other week regularly. They've established a schedule through February. Um, when what? We need, but on a, on a down note, there was some emails exchanged. I think there was one member we appointed, unfortunately took a job uh, Wisconsin. from Wisconsin. Yes, right. yes. So, but so. the committee max is nine. You appointed nine. You originally had the option of just appointing seven. So I think, you know, unless you have a dying need to appoint another member right away, this group is certainly good to go. Um, mm -hmm. Their initial, there's two engineers and a building inspector on the committee. And, um, you know, their preliminary assessment was the building had very good bones. 
and the heat is going on tomorrow the uh, you just have to make arrangements to now to get uh, salvage for the kitchen remaining kitchen Mr. Norton. I have nothing, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Vignani? A couple quick things. Um, I'll start with the sports report. I want to just congratulate the, the Citroen High School football team this year. They had a great year, um, won a fabulous game on Thanksgiving Day against Hingham, a comeback from uh, 20 to nothing to win the game 26 to 20 with 38 seconds left in the game. It was cold, but it was a, a great game. Um, and then also made it to the um, – semifinals uh, for the state championship in our district in our division so that was a great year to those guys um, Santa stroll um, John you may talk more about this but it was a, a great event um, down at the harbor this weekend Santa made his appearance uh, via motorboat and uh, there were hundreds and hundreds of kids down there it was just a great turnout and a, a great run event and then uh, up to Jenkins uh, school after that for pictures with Santa and arts and crafts and it's just a, a wonderful time um, on that note continuing community Christmas is in full gear right now so anyone that has uh, um, interest to participate in that um, I think Susan Fippen is running that so and I'm sure there's a, an email address that you can get in touch with those people um, for that great charity and yeah, I'm not gonna lastly um, the sidewalk that we talked about previously on um, Stockbridge. Stockbridge, thank you. Drawn a blank. Um, spoke with Al about this earlier because some of the people they were asking what the status on that is. And engineering is being done on that, and they expect that to be completed for next fall for the opening of the school next year. So, For the um, engineering? No, okay. for the whole sidewalk whole completed. Sidewalk. Good. Tony, what happened on Sunday? On Sunday? Train ride to Boston. I didn't do that. You did well, you must have heard about it. <laughs> Polar ahead. Express. Um, I wasn't there. My daughter helped out. Was, uh, again, I think it was uh, um, a big success. What somewhat makes this town unique from other towns? What was this? nice is that Santa, who showed up on Saturday for the um, um, for the pier, um, showed up for the um, Polar Express train ride and did a phenomenal job and uh, we commend Santa for coming to situate and doing that I think uh, Tony stole the thunder but I, I commend Santa for for participating it's not easy and uh, during this busy schedule um, you know preparing for for Christmas so thank you Santa um, the other issue is Hummer Rock had their Christmas stroll uh, a week ago you saw it in the Mariner if you had it if you had not uh, they did a wonderful job uh, this past Friday was first Friday and I, the place was mobbed down on Front Street, so I commend the businesses and, and for first, uh, first Friday and for Christmas, for the holidays, and I also commend the town for their um, holiday party, Paula Berry and also uh, Nicole Harris. That's all I had. Uh, you want to talk about North Situate? Please, Ann, tell us, North Situate. When? 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 This Friday. Right. So get out there if you haven't seen Santa yet. This Friday night, North Situate. And sh shop locally. The, the merchants in town have, have great merchandise. And uh, like John mentioned, Friday night it was packed down in the harbor. Um, and uh, they're eager to help and sell their goods. Moving to uh, correspondence, agenda item number 13. Um, just uh, briefly, I'll, I'll start with the first. Uh, the Beautifica uh, Beautification Commission announced the 2010 Harbor Merchants Window Box winders, winners. Um, I want to just say that um, <clears throat> they announced that uh, for 2010, the Harbor Merchants Window Box program, uh, they had two different categories, flower boxes and urns. Uh, first place went to uh, Front Street uh, Books for the uh, flower boxes. And um, the um, urns, first place, went to uh, flowers and festivities. Uh, there were other people. Let's put it to you this way. It's an awful lot for the businesses to go out and donate their time and, and money to, to make the front street look nice, as does uh, North Situate and Hummer Rock. And, um, you know, the Beautification Committee is just trying to say, hey, look, thank you very much for all these people who donate the time and the money to do it. The other people they wanted to at least recognize was Reva's Restaurant, Vision Source, Front Street Gallery, Joy, Native, Situate Federal, Fins, and Out of the Blue. 
Um, so again, thank you very much, and thanks to all the businesses and the people who participate. Two other items. Um, the first one is uh, <clears throat> to the uh, JDR uh, Junior Memorial Foundation for to the Reedy family. Um, on behalf of the Citroen Police Department, I'd like to offer our sincere thanks for your generous donation to our canine program. Uh, through donations such as yours, we're able to provide the citizens of Situate with a tremendously successful program. Officer McLaughlin and K-9 Felix have been commended for their tracking abilities and are a deterrent to the area of drug activity. The program is truly an asset to the department. Thank you again for your donation. Um, sincerely to, uh, to your commitment to public safety, signed uh, Chief of Police Brian Stewart. And again, that's to the Reedy family. Um, the next one is to uh, Mr. Clark of the Situate Rotary Club. On behalf of the Situate Police Department, I'd like to offer our sincere thanks for your generous donation to our DARE program. The Situate Rotary Club has been our primary supporter of the program since its inception 21 years ago. Through the years, with help of thousands of dollars of Rotary donations, we've been able to continue a program that offers tremendously important message and after-school activities for the youth of our community. Again, this is from the Chief of Police, Brian Stewart. Thank you. Um, and again, thank you for, for the donations. Uh, you know, between the Reedy family and the uh, DARE program, that's money that um, obviously continues to maintain these programs that are instrumental for our town. Um, moving on to agenda item number 14, minutes. Motion, Mr. Chairman. Please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the minutes of December 1st and December 15th, 2009. Second. Seconded by Mr. Vignani. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Good. All right, folks, we are moving on to agenda item number 15. Um, we're going into executive session, um, and as we've noticed and we've put forth, it's deployment of security personnel. It's a discussion that the board needs to take. We could not make this discussion in public. It would be detrimental, and so therefore we have to go into executive session. So we are leaving uh, the open meeting, and in order to do that, I ask for a roll call vote. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Thank you, folks. We look forward to seeing you in two weeks. Good night.